Driver Nation, and welcome back to Deliver That Driver Spotlight. I have a beautiful guest with me here today, Miss Amy Mitchell. She is actually originally started with us in Kentucky in 2019. Um, so far, she has taken 950 deliveries with us. And actually, with the delivery total, uh, total delivery of food that's actually been delivered has been $245,000 worth of food. Welcome, Amy, you guys. Thanks for joining us, Amy. Hey, thank you for having me. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. Thank you for taking time out to let us get to know you outside of being a driver. So I'm just gonna actually, <laughs> I'm just gonna get jump straight right in and ask you, how did you even get started with the gig economy? Um, so I just had part-time jobs, and um, you know, it wasn't really big. I feel like in Lexington, we didn't have very many you know, gig opportunities. And then all of a sudden there was this big boom and that became the thing to do. And so, you know, I kind of, you know, stopped all my other stuff and just started working gig work. Um, I like the flexibility and just being able to set my own hours and decide which days and times I wanted to work. I love it. I love the flexibility. That's what most of drivers say. They get into the gig economy just to have that flexibility to be able to still take care of whatever they need to and still be able to make Absolutely. money doing it. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So you have, was Deliver That your first uh, driving gig or were you doing other things before you got introduced to Deliver That? So I had done a little bit with DoorDash, I think when that first started coming out and, you know, it wasn't, it was okay. It wasn't, you know, paying as much as I had hoped. And then I found Deliver That and, you know, I, I've been with, deliver that ever since it's the one gig that i have stayed with consistently for the last four years oh my gosh well why deliver that amy why us oh just because you know i, I like i like the work i like meeting the people you know at the restaurants when i pick up i like dropping off i like that human interaction um i like the flexibility with deliver that i like the live you know support if we run into an issue and you know you all are really one of the best paying gig apps that are on the market right now awesome i love to hear that that's kind of like my story i i seen i was a driver and seen them um that they were making the, paying their drivers about 25 dollars for delivery and i was like what is this real i'm only making seven dollars mm -hmm. <laughs> i know and some of these deliveries are you know so quick you can get them done in 30 45 minutes yep. and it's just <laughs> why not know, it's, it's awesome <laughs> it's a great gig to have <laughs> So let me ask you this. You say you worked, um, multiple, you know, different part-time jobs before you got into the gig world. So are you, would mm -hmm. you say you are more of a work to live or live to work kind of girl? Gal, I should say. <laughs> oh gosh. I, I live to work. I, so I, I enjoy working, you know, I enjoy staying busy. <laughs> um, I, you know, and I like the flexibility. I know that there's some days, you know, I've got to hustle from sun up to sundown if I want to take a couple of days off or something. I so I am definitely, you know, I know, you know, I, I like to have fun. <laughs> so I like, you know, not having to work all day, every day. <laughs> I know that's right. So it seems like, Amy, you got a little hustle in you. You said you work from sun up to sundown. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with that. <laughs> I said, if I'm not working, you know, I'm, you know, at home. Just hanging out watching TV. I'm like, well, I could be out making money right now. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, let me ask you this. Which one of your family members has the greatest impact on your life? Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, I guess I would, I would probably have to say my dad. Uh, my mom passed away, um, but my dad, growing up, he was a nine-to-five worker. He worked to support um, his family, all, whatever he had to do. I have two other sisters uh -huh. and we were involved with everything. Awesome. So just learning from his, him and seeing his work ethic, you know, that spilled into me. And even till this day, you know, he's around and he, you know, if he's got, a, he's retired now. So he's enjoying that, that sweet life right now. Is and I'm he? just like, okay, that's what I have to look forward to. And in several years down the road. Uh, awesome. So kind of more of a daddy's girl, would you say? Um, right. Yeah, I would say so right now. Right yes. Now. <laughs> yeah. My mom and I were close, but yeah, I've, I've gotten closer to my dad over the years for sure. Oh, awesome. 
So if you could do anything right now besides being a gig uh, driver, what would you want to be or what you want to do? Oh, I mean, if I could win the lottery, that would, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that would be at the top of my list. I know that's right. Um, but, but I always said, if I won the lottery, I would still want to work because I just, you know, I like that interaction and I like having something to do. So you, um, you so I have, go ahead. I'm sorry. sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, I, I have several apps, you know, gig apps downloaded on my phone uh -huh. and it's just one of those things like, Oh, what do I want to do today? <laughs> you know, deliver that is always my first option. And then if I feel like doing more, you know, I'll, I'll do a little bit more. So the gig, the gig economy, I know people talk about how the gig economy is, is killing you know, businesses and everything, because everybody just wants to work for themselves. And it makes sense. Once you do it, once you, you know, try it, you, I tell people, I was like, you may never go back to yeah. a regular nine to five job. That's so true. It's, it's, it's definitely a different mindset. Definitely a different mindset. Mm -hmm. Um, definitely independent, um, uh, mindset when it does come there. Um, I lost my train of thought. What I was going to ask you next is it wasn't on the paper. It was something in my head. I, I talked too long. I made uh -uh, you No, you are fine. If, it, if I, as my grandmother say, it must not have been important. <laughs> you think of it later. I will. <laughs> oh, so this wasn't it either, but you talked about the lottery. So you won a lottery tomorrow. What you going to do? You said you're going to work, but do you have like a passion you will put that money towards and actually work that passion? Um, or give back to no. charity or anything like that. Oh, well, I would definitely donate. I would, I would definitely donate. Um, cancer charities okay. are, are big. They're close to my heart. Okay. Um, I would, yes, I would donate. You know, I, you know, everybody talks about, well, what would you do if you won? Well, I never, you know, thought Can about I it other it than out? donating <laughs> because work has just always been ingrained top of my priority list. So it's never really. You know, maybe I should think about that one. <laughs> think, what, what am I going to do with, with all these Michigans? So really fun question here. And actually, it's my last question I do have for you. Um, what is the most ridiculous outfit you ever worn? Even if it's something your parents put on you as a kid or something you had to do as an adult. Oh, my goodness. Ridiculous <laughs> outfit. Oh, man. I wish I could think back that far. Um, Think of some pictures I mean, you go through. My sisters and I, we grew up, you know, tomboys. So we liked, you know, our shorts and t-shirts and casual wear. And so, you know, just some of the dresses that we had to wear, it was just <laughs> like, really? Oh, well, so we wore dresses and then our mom would have us wear, you know, like the tube socks with some dress okay, shoes. Okay, yep. I would say looking at pictures from that, that was probably ridiculous. Um, but, but other than, um, an outfit, I will say my mom gave me a really bad haircut when I was about 11 years old. So that is probably the worst thing that I had to wear. And I had to wear that for about oh, two gosh. months before my hair finally grew back out. <laughs> do you have some pictures? Tell me you have pictures. Oh my gosh. I probably do. So, you know, it's back when you were a kid and you had bangs. And she like cut yep. my bangs like <gasps> one inch down on my forehead. And it was just, oh God, it was embarrassing. I hated just even walking into school and everything. <laughs> that reminds me of a picture that I actually go through when I have, I have a photo album with just me and it starts from a baby. But one particular picture when we actually got our house, we were standing on the porch and I had these pigtails and it just sticking straight out like this. And I got these big old glasses and they like touch here. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And my kids look at that and they be like, mom. And they just give me that look. I'm like, you better shut up. <laughs> wow. The things our parents do. So one last question I do have for you. It's our bonus question. We actually like to give it to Ben or Nate. So um, to be able to ask you. So Ben is here with us. Ben, what's a bonus question for Amy? I have like a really stupid one. And <laughs> I don't know if it's going to be that funny, but Kentucky Fried Chicken, overrated or underrated? You hear Ben, he said Kentucky Fried Chicken, overrated or underrated? Um, I'm going to say overrated. <laughs> Me too, Amy. It's overrated. What you think, Ben? They they got a good ch the chicken sandwich we well, ranked it number one. Mm. 
But try and have Popeyes down here. No, there's just so many new like <laughs> hot chicken. Hot chicken is coming out, and okay. that's just that's to me that's just way better than your KFC. <laughs> I think I might have seen them on the Food Network channel, um, and it looked real good. <laughs> what about? Uh... Kentucky Derby, is it worth going to? Is the Kentucky Derby worth going to? Yes. Yes. So I have not been, I haven't been to the Derby, um, but it's on my bucket list. You should go. We have Keeneland racing in Lexington. So that's something, you know, that's kind of like the pre-Derby. We have that every April and every October. But yes, you should always go to a race and so I just want to say thank you so much, Amy, again, for allowing us here at Deliver That to be able to get to know you outside of being the Deliver That driver. Thank you. It's great to be a part of this.